What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you the quickest, easiest way to be able to find the X and Y intercepts of a linear equation. Now you might already look at this problem and say, hey, I already know the Y intercept, that's negative three. That's kind of easy. And yeah, you're right. But what about if you don't have it in slope intercept form? What I'm about to show you in this video, you can apply no matter what form your linear equation is in. However, since it's in slope intercept form, I do wanna make sure we agree on a couple points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly graph this using my slope intercept method. So therefore we can kind of confirm what exactly the Y intercept is as well as the X intercept. So if you're going to graph this, remember, you always find like the B, which is the Y intercept, negative three, and you're going to go down to negative three. So one, two, three. And again, we're doing this on the Y axis. This is the X axis. Okay. So we go down to Y axis, negative three, and then we follow the slope to find another point. You can go to the right, go to the left. In this case, I'm going to go to the right. So I'm going to go up four. So one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to go to the right three, one, two, three. Okay. Now I can go ahead and connect these two points, but we have a little problem here because what I want you to recognize here is it doesn't look like my graph crosses that exact point that I have on my graph. So so I need some way to be able to algebraically be able to figure out what exactly is the X intercept. I can't always rely on graphing. So the main thing I want you to understand in this case is when we're looking at the Y intercept, right? That's where the graph crosses the Y axis. We know this value is zero negative three, but I really just want you to understand that it's zero. And then we have some Y value. And for the X intercept, right? That's going to be some X value, but then Y is going to be equal to zero. Because again, if you think about like, what is the X and the Y axis? They're just number lines, right? The X axis is a horizontal number line. The Y axis is a vertical number line. So at this point here, you can see that the X and Y is zero. So the Y axis, X is always equal to zero. And for the X axis, Y is always equal to zero. So that's why it's important when you're trying to find the X and the Y intercepts, this is really all I want you to know. To find the X intercept, Y is going to equal to zero. So therefore, if I want to find this X intercept, which is not very apparent via the graph, what I'm simply going to do is just replace Y with zero and then go ahead and solve for X. Okay. And now you can see that I have a, basically a two-step equation, right? I can just add the three to the other side. So I get a three equals a four thirds X, right? And now if I want to be able to get rid of multiplying by four thirds, I can go ahead and just multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. So I can multiply by a three fourths. So by multiplying by a three fourths, therefore that's going to be, I can rewrite this as a fraction. So then I can multiply straight across. So therefore that's going to give me a nine fourths is equal to X. Now, sometimes it's kind of difficult to say, is that the right answer or not? Sometimes also helpful to kind of look at it and in terms of a mixed number to make sure it makes sense. Because if you look at this graph that I did here, that's roughly two and some change, right? Two, it's it's more than two, but it's less than three. So if I was to rewrite this as a mixed number, four goes into nine, how many times? Two times, right? With the remainder of one. So that's going to be two and one fourth is equal to X. So basically exact same value. This is just written as an improper fraction. This is a mixed number, but I want you to be able to see that from writing it in this form, we can verify that. Yeah, that does kind of make some sense. Now, the reason why negative three is going to be the Y intercept is because again, for the exact same reason, when I'm trying to find the Y intercept, X is going to equal to zero. So look what happens when I put a zero in for the X, like it's pretty simple, right? Four thirds times zero is just going to be zero. So I have Y equals a zero minus three, which is just going to be a negative three again, which we already knew. But the important thing about this guys, is it doesn't matter what form point slope form standard form. Whenever you're trying to find the X and the Y intercepts of a linear equation, just go and plug zero in for Y to find the X intercept and plug zero in for X to find the Y intercept. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you want more examples of linear equations or notes that I provide my students inside my courses, then go and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below or check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.